Okay, so it's quite late here on the 1st of June 2019. I'm out here in the garden because it's so damn hot in the cave and I also got all sorts of crap everywhere because I'm kind of getting some new furniture put in there and stuff to kind of change the look and feel a little bit. But of course, what this means is hopefully you can see me <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk about my nine kilowatt solar array performance here in the UK for the month of May 2019. Right, so definitely going to be putting this uh, Sony A6500 camera and this uh, Sigma lens to the test tonight in this dark hour. It's quarter past 11, um, but I'm going to try and stay awake and to talk to you about the stats. So a couple of things I want to mention before we kind of go into the month's performance. The first one is a fair few people have asked me if I'll be going to fully charge live at Silverstone, which I think is happening next week. Um, unfortunately, I had to make it for a few reasons, a few family kind of things going on, as well as um, I'm trying to get some surgery uh, arranged. So just unfortunately, this this time I can't make it. Hopefully, if uh, fully charged live is happening again next year, things will be a little bit different, and then hopefully I'll be able to make it, um, which is good. Um, if you are going, obviously have a great time, and please feel free to let me know any kind of cool things that you discover uh, on that journey. The other thing is um, a few people have um, contacted me because there's been quite a few petitions that um, various companies have raised, mainly obviously energy companies, to kind of try and get the government to not introduce, which I think I think it's an EU uh, law or regulation or something that is proposed to come into play in uh, August this year. And that's around increasing the tax, the VAT, on solar energy products. So right now, if you have um, solar installed or a battery at the same time as solar, um, you'll only pay 5% VAT, which is the same as what you, you, know, you pay 5% VAT on your electricity and gas costs. Um, but they are proposing to increase that from 5% up to 20%. So obviously not good and also a little bit hypocritical in terms of government's plight supposedly to make us green or greener um, by a certain date so this is a real thing um, but the thing to keep in mind is I don't actually think that most residential customers are going to be impacted by this because that increase from 5% to 20% only happens if your installation costs equate to 60% or more of the total cost so you'd have to have quite a substantial installation to make that even a thing so I wouldn't worry about it too much, um, but I think the important thing is when you're getting these quotes to make sure that you ask um, to have the installation costs as a breakdown so you can work out what that um, tax implication may or may not be. Oh, I can hear music, someone's having a party. Um, so I looked through, I think there's seven or eight quotes that I had from the past, none of them had installation kind of costs broken out it's just all kind of baked into one I think because obviously it just wasn't an issue uh, when I was having installation uh, done obviously it's not it's not gonna be a thing until August if it happens at all so just keep that in mind if you're getting quotes you want to get a f you want to find out from them how much of that total bill is installation cost so you can get an idea of if it's 5% uh, or 20% that it would be paying um, the reason I mention this not only because people have um, asked me about it, but I know a few uh, people have had quotes and they're trying to get kind of pressured into making a purchase before August due to this change. And again, it's just back to the usual situation where people don't know what they're talking about and trying to force customers that may or may not be uh, better informed uh, about the situation and trying to force them to spend money that perhaps they're not ready to spend yet. So that's about that and um, more onto the solar. So for May uh, in the year I have obviously as usual my two estimates. Um, one is the estimate from my solar installer and they say that I should have generated or would hope to generate around 1008 um, kilowatt hours so a little bit over one megawatt and my estimates are 1009 kilowatt hours so again 
a very slight variance. In general, my results, the real world results tend to be somewhere in between. So maybe we're looking for 1008.5 or, or something like that for the month. So let's share the screen and uh, take you through the actual generation for the month. Uh, I do know already before even me open up this screen that May did see my best solar generation day um, to date so far. So that was pretty damn cool anyway. Okay, so here we are. So you can see for the month of May 2019, my total system production was 1.06 megawatt hours. So not the 1.08 or the 1.09 that I'd hoped to generate, so a little bit short of it. Um, I think that's because towards the end of May, there's a few crappy days really that kind of st stole the win away, but still super impressive um, generation. So I'm really happy with that. Uh, in terms of consumption, I was able to consume 88% of that. So 0.93 megawatt hours was consumed by myself and 12% went back into the grid, which was 0.12 megawatt hours. What's interesting there is if we look over to the consumption, that the consumption obviously was less and my import was less than I exported. So this is, I think is the first month really where I have exported more uh, than I've imported. So it's it's a fantastic month really. So if every if the next kind of three or four months can be like this, then that's a really good um, place for me to be. So before we go into um, looking through the, the, the month in general, you can see here it was the 15th that had my best day and that was a, a production for the whole day of 56.02 kilowatt hours, which is absolutely fantastic. And if we look down here at the bottom, we can see that the graph is you know, having a nice upward trend. Um, and again, a little bit over the month, one uh, megawatt hour. And I'm hoping that kind of June, July, we can maybe creep closer to that 1.25 megawatt hours for the whole month. But we shall see. Right, so let's um, breeze through the month and uh, take you through what's happening. There are a couple of months here where you can see those big red spikes. Um, and that's because I did have to have a, do a couple of work trips where I decided to pull from the grid. Um, to charge the car in the off peak because I had to, to do a few miles uh, the following day. But again, still much, 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 much cheaper uh, than petrol. I've actually got a video that I'm halfway completed talking about the different ways that you can charge uh, a Tesla because I've been really, really happy with the performance over the last couple of weeks so I've had to do uh, a bit of extra mileage. Right, so let's go through it. So on the first here, we can see reasonable um, solar production day on the first. Clipping, well, not clipping, but managed to reach um, six kilowatts a couple of times, um, but obviously a little bit overcast, so it wasn't that fantastic. Second, not great, but again, we continue to be able to kind of fully charge the power and consume everything that we need to. Third, again, Nothing too much to write home about. Uh, fourth was a pretty good day, obviously quite overcast, but we can see we've kind of hitting the six kilowatt maximum uh, a fair few times. So that's a good place to be. Fifth, very similar. Um, a little bit of export happening there. We couldn't fully utilize everything. Six again, overcast day, but reasonable performance. This uh, seventh here, you can see, this is where I charged the car up uh, early on in the morning because I had to um, do a, a longish trip. Um, but then a good solid day of generation. We can see it clipping uh, for a couple of hours there uh, in the morning and then obviously overcast the rest of the day, but was able to charge the power wall and uh, heat hot water and everything. So really good. On the eighth, pretty crappy day there. And I'm pretty sure that we would have had to pull a little bit from the grid to cycle the, the power wall slightly on the next day. Yep. So you can see a little bit of um, grid charge happening uh, for the power wall. And obviously then, I don't know what's happening here. Half past six. Oh, that's probably just the shower and hair dryers and stuff. And because there was nothing in the power wall, having to use a grid for that. 
a little bit of um, power wall cycling again on the 10th of May there but then in general the rest of the day was pretty good again it seems like a bit cloudy because a bit um, a bit peaky uh, but a good level of generation and some spots where we couldn't fully utilize it all so just over a kilowatt exported to the grid 11th reasonable day again a couple of peaks there I think the car must have been charging and um, so when the car is charging it's like a 30 second delay where it adjusts to whether the sun goes in or out where it will kind of pull from the grid if it needs to but it's only a minimum out being 30 seconds I can change that but I kind of just don't want the car to get a bit kind of confused with quick quick um, you know, changes in power that's going to it here we go so the 12th is when the magic starts to happen so a few things here brilliant clipping from like quarter past 8 all the way through to 11.30 uh, I think as I mentioned already the best thing that I noticed there is from 8.15 in the morning so really still early hours of the morning I'm at maximum kind of generation capability and that kind of just kicks through for the early you know up until lunchtime which is really really good and you have like a whole week of this performance so again you can see here I just can't use it all so 22% goes back into the grid because I just can't consume it similar on the 14th 15th being my best day look at that so from like 8 o'clock pretty much all the way through to like quarter past 1 amazing performance as it slowly then the sun goes around the front of the house um, but a pretty good kind of graph there this is the a kind of a point where I was thinking I don't think it it's gonna make sense to me overall in terms of system performance but does it make sense to have another battery or will it just be offset when I get another electric vehicle and then I'd be putting some power into that as well but once I've had the system for 12 months then I can make a more informed decision as to whether a second power will make sense um, I think the answer is no um, because as we see in this month when when we've got these good days it's amazing and there's lots of energy that I can't utilize but then it can only just be that the next day happens and then let's just see where we are yeah just like this then the 17th comes along the weather's gone to crap uh, and then by the end of the day I'm out of energy again and I'm pulling from the grid at like 11 p.m. so but maybe if I had the other power wall I would have been able to last I don't know it's it's tricky and obviously power walls or any of these batteries they do cost a lot of money and it's going to be a bit tricky to work out the payback sometimes let's keep going so 19th not too bad a bit patchy 20th is patchy we really had that you know, really good week and then a few kind of goodish days so 21st was pretty good as well and 22nd wasn't too bad 23rd again uh, pretty good generation a lot of exporting again I couldn't I could have filled another power wall with that amount of export that day um, 24th is good about 10 kilowatts of export then I had another trip uh, that I had to do, so I did um, charge the car up uh, using off-peak electricity on the Optimus Go tariff. So again, only five pence a kilowatt, um, so so much cheaper than petrol. So nothing to worry about there. Then the weather kind of sloped off again um, for the rest of the month, really. So 26, not that great, but I'm able to charge the power wall, consume most things. 27 again, not fantastic. 28th again decent performance uh, but not brilliant uh, and 29th things start to get a little bit better 29th 30th and 31st um, again a little bit of power wall cycling there in the morning a couple of peaks um, and then obviously the last day of the month was okay but not stellar so just I think that's just what had me a little bit short of um, my goal to kind of hit the predictions. The one thing that is good, and I really knew this in the winter anyway, is even when we have these overcast days, okay, I can't really charge the car up and it's not going to heat all the water, so I'm having to use the gas. Um, but it is still enough that during the sunlight hours, even when it's cloudy, it is able to fully power my house and you know, add some level of charge into the power wall that 
you know, it definitely helps me out in the evenings most times. So again, I'm really happy with the performance of the system. Uh, I hope this information continues to be interesting. People, you, you guys continue to say that it is. Um, I'd be interested, obviously, in the comments, uh, a bit like last month, if you want to share um, your statistics as well. So it helps people in this community understand what's happening a little bit more. Um, I haven't had my proper um, electricity and gas bills through yet, but from my own calculations, I think my the cost of my electricity that I pulled from the grid uh, for the month of May was around fourteen pounds and eighty eight pence. And I think the gas was around I think it was nine pound ninety eight or something, uh, roughly when I submitted it. So again. I am using gas where I was kind of hoping I wouldn't, uh, but again, I'm still I'm using gas to heat the water instead of stealing it from the power wall, and I still can't decide if that's the right thing to do or not. So we'll see in June. I've got to think about if I'm going to boost with the gas or boost with electricity and, and see what happens. In terms of um, other things, so in terms of car charging so I put 239.53 kilowatt hours electricity into my car from my home charger so that's and around 79% of that was uh, from solar or from the grid uh, not from the grid from my power wall and only 21% came from the grid so just under 50 kilowatt hours from the grid so fantastic to be you know charging the car for free most of the time and uh, yeah and I have the added benefit obviously with the Optimus Go or well, the Optimus Energy uh, company that their electricity is all renewable anyway so it's cheap and pretty good in terms of environmental stuff if we look at um, the hot water so uh, in the month of May put 135 kilowatt hours of electricity into heating hot water which again was pretty good and then finally if we look at the power wall um, around 276 kilowatt hours of electricity went into the power wall and I was able to extract 244 kilowatt hours from the power wall so that again is around um, what is it it's around 88 88 89-ish percent efficiency so again very close to the the 90 percent that tests the claim so yeah all in all i continue to be very happy with how the the system is performing i'm excited to see what happens in june and july um because the predictions for my system are kind of pretty consistent so may june and july all kind of have this kind of capping at kind of around 1009 kilowatt hours so i'm wondering is that really the most or is the system going to kind of blow me away and somehow generate 1.25 actually 1.21 megawatt hours would be good because i just say 1.21 gigawatts whatever the gigawatt um but yeah so i'm happy i am gonna call it a night though because i'm tired and i probably shouldn't be out here nearly midnight ravising on about solar stuff but Hope you're all well, take care of yourself and uh, enjoy the rest of the weekend. Thanks for watching this video, a thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.